Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review of CW's The Vampire Diaries. This could be seen season 7, episode 22, which is called Gods and Monsters. And it was, of course, the season 7 finale. Uh, as always, I apologize for the lateness, but you guys are used, used to this by now. I was working last night and uh, hung out with my girlfriend earlier today, so got around to watching it uh, just a little bit ago. Um, my review of the originals uh, will probably be tomorrow. You know, I kind of want to divide up my time between uh, you know, my free time of not working and to what I should do tomorrow before I have to go to work. Um, so you can expect the originals to review uh, by sometime tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening or so. Uh, but overall, uh, this episode, Gods and Monsters, it was, it was decent. It was okay. Um, well, I guess it was probably better than okay, uh, because in comparison to some of the other episodes this season, this was probably one of the better ones. Um, you know, there have been some pretty good episodes this season. It's been, uh, uh I think I'll have to let some a little bit more to say how the season was overall, but, uh, it was good for the way the season went, you know, I thought it was a decent, it gave us a pretty damn good cliffhanger for, uh, season eight, I think, or at least something to, uh, get us a little bit excited for as far as the new threat goes for next season, I guess. Um, so for this season, the past couple, it was a pretty strong one, um, although not as good as, uh, the season six finale, mainly because, of course, it had to do with, uh, a lot of the Elena stuff, you know, saying goodbye to her. Uh, so it's going to be hard for anything to really top that. But, um, unless, of course, like the series finale or something. Um, which could obviously bring it in that same sense. Um, but in comparison to, like, previous Vampire Diaries finales, besides that, uh, I don't know. Um, even though the Vampire Diaries for the past few seasons hasn't been as good as, uh, you know, one through four five to a certain extent with the Catherine stuff and what went on with Damon at the end. Um, in comparison to the other early ones, I don't feel like it's as good. Um, like, even when the Vampire Diaries was getting, uh, you know, sort of lessening to me, I could always count on the finale still being, you know, pretty pretty awesome, you know, pretty amazing. And this one, it didn't quite meet that standard that the show is set to me, at least. Because um, even last year when the show was starting to you know, kind of go down a little bit. We still, again, had an amazing goodbye with Elena, the emotional impact of that, which wasn't necessarily planned on, uh, you know, in the story as a whole. Um, yeah, as far as, like, the... Uh, I don't even know I'm sorry right now, because <laughs> Nan Dobrev did say that, you know, it was always a six-season story, but we don't know if that's actually true or not. Um, so it, it was a good episode, you know, for this season, but it wasn't up to the standards of previous finales, I don't think. it More so, best way I can describe it without rambling and uh, talking in circles um, is to say that it felt like a good episode this season, but not necessarily finale level for the show. Um, I should probably should have said that right off the bat. Um, but again, not a bad episode. It was a good one, one of the better ones of the season. Um, of course, a lot of this revolved around... Uh, Damon and the others trying to get into the armory and, uh, you know, vanquish this evil that was controlling Bonnie that was linked to her, because if they destroy that... Oh, excuse me. If they destroy that, um, you know, of course, the, what's going on with her and, uh, you know, Raina's influence and stuff and, uh, what she had to do will no longer be a factor with her, um, which, of course, is key because Bonnie is chasing after them for the majority of this episode, or at least the first, uh, half or so. Um, or the first quarter, anyway. <laughs> um, so a lot of it revolved around that, and, you know, it was a more focused episode, you know, because it revolved, all, all revolved around this one main objective for all the characters, really. Um, so I did like that, you know, we didn't have a lot of, uh, distractions or, like, uh, uh, what do I, what do I want to say right now? <laughs> um, like, it didn't really sidetrack too much. Um, so that's a plus I can give this episode. It didn't really sidetrack from the main focus of what it was uh, trying to do. Um, and it did have some really well-acted, you know, scenes and a couple of good, uh, really good character interactions and uh, moments, I want to say, especially between Damon and Stefan. Um, but we'll talk more about that in a few minutes.
Uh, we did have sort of a funny scene at the beginning of the episode with uh, Damon trying to get into the armory building again himself. Um, he basically just uh, caused a big explosion and uh, he was like, nope, can't get in. <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, let's see. Uh, we had Enzo. Enzo played a pretty huge part in this finale too, and I think Michael Malarkey uh, actually did a pretty damn good job throughout, you know. Um, I'm starting to care about Enzo a little more. I think this season has helped with that, sort of bring him more into a concentration and a vocal point of the show with our other central characters. Uh, that's something else I can say this season succeeded in, I guess. Um, but Enzo was warned about this entity or the whatever f type of force is within you know that area where they're trying to get into the tomb or the base my favorite what they're calling it um William was warned about it by Alex's sister uh let's see Bonnie's sort of warning Stefan and the others on the phone that she's catching up to him so speed up and this is kind of a cool moment because Stefan ends up coming with the idea that um she can she could sense that they're getting closer but she didn't know like how you know she just thought she was you know, gaining on them further and further but Stefan actually reversed it and you know pulled past her and at the same time Matt was able to get free of his bindings and sort of you know be her off and have them crash in the woods um we also had let's see uh we had Damon getting this idea uh that Caroline's kids are well not Caroline's kids are really Lark and uh, Joe's kids um, being able to siphon the magic from the barrier that's around the armory uh, but of course Caroline and Lark are completely opposed to that so Damon wanted to you know fly over there and kidnap them <laughs> which I thought would have been fun uh, we also had Bonnie you know Matt tries to reach out to her again even though she's under you know this huge influence um, basically saying I can be there to stop you, I can be there to help you every time, just, you know, let me keep going with you. Um, but of course, Bonnie realizes, you know, he's Matt, so he's not really going to succeed at anything he tries to do <laughs> on the show. Um, but Bonnie ends up leaving him. And this leads to, a, I'll say it, I just uh, mocked Matt in a pretty big way, but um, I will say this led to a pretty good uh, moment for him later on, and it does have potential uh, to grow into something more for the character in season 8. Um, we'll talk more about that in a few minutes, though. Um, let's see what else. I, I took my notes as usual. <laughs> uh, okay, and then we get this moment between uh, Damon and Stefan, which is kind of like a two parter type of thing. You know, we had uh, Stefan saying. Um, basically he put himself in the coffin, you know, for those, you know, tried to for those, uh, three years or so, um, out of fear, not because he just solely loves Elaine and wants to do this, but because he's afraid that if he doesn't, something else is going to happen or, you know, he's going to lose her or something along those lines. Um, which again, great acting from Paul Wesley and, uh, Ian Summerholder. Um, but again, this all feels like familiar territory, you know, we've, we've had him post each other like this how many times before, and it still bugged me that the season retried old ground like that. But we've talked about that before, so we don't really need to get into that again right now. Um, still a good scene. Um, you know, Caroline's up not really seeing it any other way around it, especially with helping Bonnie and stuff, so she does get the kids to open the doors. Um, and I did like en Enzo, he got Bonnie to come after him to lure uh, her after him, you know, because he got the idea that, oh, she she can't really control or stop herself from what she's doing completely, but she can sort of channel and focus it onto someone in particular to go after for the moment anyway. And so Enzo sort of uh, lures her away and, you know, buys the other some time. Um, and then Bonnie ends up catching up with him pretty quickly, you know, he's running low on gas, but he's making a meal and you want to share one last one with her. And it almost uh, seemed like Enzo was, you know, aware of what was going to happen, you know, it was almost like Enzo was aware of the likely result of this either way. Um, and this led to a very uh, emotional moment between uh, Bonnie and Enzo. Um, we get a little bit of a fight, you know, but Bonnie's becoming stronger with, uh, you know, the Huntress in her and stuff like that that despite Enzo sort of going back and forth with her a little bit and he actually flipping her and you know, crashing her through a table, which is pretty badass. 
um, she ends up sort of putting him down, you know, shooting him in the, you know, leg, ankle area with the shot, you know, the wooden type thing. Um, then Enzo is pinned down by the stake, and Bonnie's trying to push it into him, but she's, you know, she is kind of fighting it, but she can't stop herself forever. And uh, Enzo again, you know, acknowledges the Bonnie's getting stronger, so he can't, you know, keep it up. He can't, oh, <laughs> he can, uh, you know, hold it back for too much longer. Um, but this scene turned into a pretty damn emotional one, you know. Um, they said goodbye to each other, and Enzo basically reassured Bonnie I'd be okay not to think about this when she's done, um, but to remember the memories they've shared together for the past three years or so. Uh, again, uh, great acting from Michael Malarkey in this episode, and of course, you know, Cat Graham, she's good as always, um, but Michael Malarkey uh, really shined in the scene. Um, just uh, some really good acting from him. Um, and I thought Enzo was going to die here for a minute, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, because it was just such a raw acting scene, it sort of felt like it was sort of the end. Uh, but, but, uh, <laughs> but what was going on at the same time is that Damon actually ended up going into the room by himself, and we get sort of part two to that really uh, good back and forth between him and Stefan. You know, Damon basically, uh, you know, saying how Stefan's helped him over and over, and he you know, uh, tried to uh, get him out of this and that. Uh, and he's sorry, you know, he's sorry about, you know, going in the coffin for, uh, trying to for all those years and everything else. Uh, I can't repeat the, the lines, I won't do it justice, but again, a great bonding moment. Um, really well acted by Ian Somerhalder and Paul Wesley, but one that probably didn't have to happen again, you know. Uh, the moments between these two are still always the strongest on the show, but at the same time, we've seen this before. But I still did really like the scene just because of the good acting that went into it and the dialogue I thought was uh, written pretty accurately to the characters despite it you know, sort of, again, feeling uh, stale um, uh, that the issue is going on again in the first place. Um, so Damon basically says, you know, let me succeed or fail, but, you know, don't feel like you have to do anything about it. You know, let me do whatever. Um, they get a bro hug, which, again, is pretty touching. Um... And just before uh, Bonnie's finally forced to kill Enzo, Damon's able to burn the body and s stops just in time, which was, you know, nice to see. You know, I, again, I want to hit, I felt like Enzo was going to die by the same time. I'm glad they kept him alive because I feel like they might need uh, him for the final season. I feel like they might need him for the last one or so. Um, again, we don't know if eight's going to be the last one anyway, but it, it really should be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I... I I don't think that we want to see Bonnie go through, you know, killing someone she loves again. Um, no, I mean, I don't think we want to see Bonnie go through that. She's already been through enough already. She already self-sacrifices. We don't need a, you know, huge guilty conscience on her now. Um, let's see. Alaric, you know, again, being uh, pretty selfless, um, you know, he urges Caroline to stay with Stefan. And, you know, they sort of talk about what they are and how they change each other's lives, but at the same time, they're just, you know, in different places. They're just uh, wanting different things. Uh, and Alaric, you know, he's willing to accept their friendship and, you know, still be a family in a sense, but at the same time, he, real he acknowledges that, you know, him and her aren't really going to be anything, but they can still sort of have that connection with each other, even if they're not romantically involved. And the you know, Alaric and Caroline romance was weird, and we never actually seen too much of it on screen, which you know, made it even less interesting. Um, but you know, again, Alaric, you know, I liked him in this moment. You know, he's a good guy and stuff. And you know, we had that Caroline and uh, Stefan kiss, which we all knew it was going to lead to. That was okay too. Again, I, I like Stefan, but uh, I, don't, I don't really care about Caroline to be honest. I didn't really, I didn't really. Uh, I was. I just didn't feel too interested in this whole uh, little issue and rift between. We all knew it was going to come back like this anyway. Um, again, we had Matt still sitting in the wreck, and he sees Penny. You know, he sort of wanted to go to the light, basically. You know, but Penny assures him there's a better life for him out there when he wakes up. And Matt does wake up, and at the end, we sort of see him heading off. You know, leaving Mystic Falls. And I was talking about Matt earlier. You know, Matt. Uh, he's never been an overly interesting character. You know, he's always been pretty much the same since season one. Um, well, I think this is a chance to perhaps make him a more intriguing character or put him down in a more interesting path. 
So I hope they take this chance and you know come up with something creative and uh, different for them that makes us invest a little bit more in them again. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, Zach Rorig does a good job, but again, they just, they just need to do something with the character after uh, seven seasons, you know. And this is their chance for it. Um, so that was all right. Uh, you know, again, not right now. Not right now. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I don't remember what I was going to say now. Great. <laughs> um, but yeah, Matt. Potential. Maybe. We'll see what they do. <laughs> or see how they drop a ball again, more likely. But uh, Talk about Stefan and Caroline. And, you know, we, we get a little moment between Bonnie and Damon on the phone. You know, Bonnie kind of forgives him because basically he was almost, not completely, but, you know, he made the decision to go in by himself and sort of selflessly act, and he was the reason why Bonnie didn't kill Enzo, so that helped things. And then we get the part we see, we heard and seen in the promo, you know, Damon hears Elena. We all knew this was a trick, you know, but Damon is so desperate, and, you know, so much has uh, clung to that since the season started. Um, Damon goes in, and then Enzo, you know, it's been a few hours, and Enzo goes in to look for him. Damon, we see right away, is under the sinister influence, and we basically see this weird, mutated, like, creature-like hand to come in and, you know, grab Enzo and pull him away. Um, and we, months later, you know, we see Stephanie getting really frustrated and trying to break in, but he can't. Um, Bonnie has no magic, so she's not able to do locator spells because when they finally were able to open it, no one is in there. It's completely empty. Uh, and then we see Damon and Enzo, you know, hanging bodies for some reason. And that's kind of where the season ends. Um, so, yeah, overall, uh, I'm interested in the new threat, I guess, this uh, entity, this whatever it is. Um, I just hope it's not another, like, normal looking uh, demonic you know, vampire thing again. I, I want it to be, like, a, maybe some kind of weird, unique creature design or something, even though the CGI probably won't, won't be that great. Um, I hope it works something a little bit different like that, I guess. Uh, and so it's it's intriguing enough of a threat, I guess. Um, so overall, this season tell me it was good for the season standards, but I didn't quite measure up to, uh, you know, as, as good as uh, TVD finales usually are. I don't think quite lived up to it, but it definitely was one of the best episodes of the season and the season as a whole it was decent you know had its higher points overall was sort of just okay i want to say um with some little rises once in a while but yeah so those are my thoughts on the season finale let me know what you guys thought about it. if there's anything i forgot feel free to leave a comment below i'd love to talk about it more kind of <laughs> but yeah i'm always open to discussing with you guys you know that um, like I said, my original interview will be out sometime tomorrow, most likely. I can apologize for the lateness, but it is what it is in my schedule. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Look for me on, uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and look for me on Peace.